Hi, this is PA Camping Dad, Doogie. Uh, I'm going to show you how to make a caldera cone. Uh, make one similar to this one that I've already made. Uh, this one I made for an IMUSA 12 centimeter pot. I just got a Tokes 750, uh, and I'm gonna gonna make one for that. And I figured I'd document the process. Um, I'm trying to get it around the bottom rivet here. Yeah, that's a shift it shift it off a little bit, and then I can get it past that bottom rivet, and then line it back up. To square. But a caldera cone acts as a windscreen and a um, basically it concentrates the heat, uh, especially useful for an alcohol stove, which uh, doesn't, uh, is very affected by wind, and this will concentrate the heat and bring you to a boil with uh, much less fuel. So, let me get to it and show you how to make, how I made one of these. So this is my pot that I'm gonna make the cone for. And I've decided that I want my cone to be six inches high. And I took that by the, going to have this one go all the way up to the top rim. That's how it should be going. So I have uh, four and a quarter inches for the height of this pot and then I wanted to give it uh, one and three quarters inches for my stove and the gap for it. So let me bring the camera down on my work surface here so you can see what I'm doing. I also uh, took the stock handles off of this pot and I made a removable handle that can load in from the top uh, so it, uh, I can get my cone pretty close and just have a small notch for the handle instead of one that would have to come way down to the bottom since it had the, the butterfly handles. So here's the setup that I came up with. I'm going to need to have a way to draw an arc. So I just took a small scrap of of wood, in this case it was a little piece of plywood, and put a screw in it, an old coat hanger uh, with a loop on the end. And this is actually the adjustable piece from a laboratory sink uh, that you used to uh, control the stopper with. And it was from a sink that I had removed, so I had saved it, made use of this. And in this case, I measured from this hole here and drilled a new hole at six inches so I can don't have to move my setup. Um, so then the next thing you want to do, this is just uh, aluminum flashing. I bought it from Lowe's or Home Depot. that's gonna hold. Um, I got the 12 inch or is it 12 inch on? Looks like it's 14 inch. It comes in I guess 10 and 14 inch sections. I think the 10 inch would be plenty. Uh, the last one I actually was able to get two out of one of these pieces. But you want to adjust it so that your bottom um, of your arc will come close to the bottom of your material and obviously you don't want it to move after you start and you draw an arc and then one of the other things that I do is out on the edge of my arc on one side at least 
draw a straight line to your other mark. So uh, the first time I made it, I didn't really have to take it tape it down, but uh, I was having some issues with uh, trying to film and stretch over the side. So I slid it a couple times. So I've taped it back into position, and uh, I think I've pretty much hit my original position. Yep. Upper line as well. Uh, I forgot to mention the size of the piece for this um, pot which has a diameter of four inches I uh, used an 18 or I used a 20 inch piece of of metal I made a couple tests on a scrap piece of paper to see how much uh, space I needed and I think this should get me what I need to go so now you just carefully cut out the lines um, don't worry so much about the one edge you want a square edge on one end and I'll, you can do that either with a pair of scissors or I've got just uh, an old pair of, of tin snips you know, these style and they work great for this lightweight aluminum but even a heavy duty pair of scissors will work So I forgot to mention earlier that my the distance that the radius that this is the original was drawn the longer this distance the skinnier your caldera cone will be be so you can play with different uh, settings different lengths um, I made this one when I made this one I had it almost as long as this setup would go I shortened it up so I have a little little squatter cone in this instance I think I did um, no, I can can measure it I did my inner dimension at 15 inches the upper one 15 inches for my upper arc and then 6 inches additional so 21 inches for my for my lower arc so once you have that done up what you want to do is you want to hold into a cone and have your straight edge on the outside where you'll be able to mark that Once you get it down close enough, you want to cinch it, cinch it down so it's tight. And bring it, line it all up as best you can. This is what's, what your final shape will be. Once you get it to where you want it, hold it, hold it good. It's going to be hard for me to do on camera. So once you get it all lined up how you want it, tape it. And if you have a little 
wobble to it. It's just that you weren't too precise on the bottom cut. Uh, so I'll work on that. I can straighten that up. But you want to get it how you want. And when you have it in position, just make a small mark on the top and bottom. This will be a reference line. You're not going to cut on that line because you need it to be big enough to make the seam. The seam is formed by folding the end one over one way and the other end over the other direction. And then the two pieces will interlock. A lot easier to do when you're not trying to get it on film. So you see how they, see how they interlock there. And it forms a nice tight, tight lock. Now one thing I found with this is you can tweak this joint to be a little bigger uh, if you make it too tight but if you make it uh, too large you can't pull it down you can't make it smaller very easily I ruined one trying that So after you have your marks on there, remove your tape, and what you'll want to do is, if you make your folds of the metal a half inch on each fold, you'll want to go an inch and a half past the marks that you just made. What I'll do is make a mark an inch and a half and I'm gonna go like a sixteenth of an inch less than that just so that I'm make sure I'm tight enough So then cut along that line. Now you want to take this piece and fold a half inch fold on each end. One that you'll fold up and one that you'll fold down. And that's your basic, I'll get that fold a lot tighter, but that's your basic caldera cone. I'll tighten that, that up, we can check our measurement here, and hopefully it's a little tight. And that's just what we wanted, is it's a little tight, so I'll... I'm going to crimp it down a little bit more first, but what we can do is we can sneak in on the final dimension by trimming a little bit off of here and the same amount off of here. So 
So I'll do that a couple times until we sneak up on the final dimension. Once we get that final dimension good, then I'll crimp it down. So you see here the end of my final adjustments here. First trimmed a little less than a sixteenth of an inch and then a, a fine sliver. I did the same trims off both pieces and I think we should be, be pretty good now. snug fit. I'm going to go ahead and, and clamp down my seam uh, but I'm able to get in there now with uh, not too much wiggling. We'll see. So I've done the final adjustments here and it fits in nicely. Snug but not too tight. Uh, now I need to cut a notch out and I'll just have to figure out how far down I need to go to clear these pieces. Um, so I want to give credit to 2Q who showed me his jig that he brings to, to Maha every year. Uh, on how to how to make this. So this is the handle that I created, similar to one that he made, but uh, I have a different pot, so I did it slightly differently. So you can see now I'm able to come up very high to the rim. So I only need clearance for these uh, bumps here, obviously to get up, and then I can come up. You know, as long as I clear those two bumps, I should be good with my handle. And hopefully I won't throw too much heat up there. So I'll, slowly what I'll do is I'll pick an area, I think I'll go 45 degrees off from the, the seam. Uh, I know I've had things like this before where you don't want to go 180 degrees out because it uh, causes funny stresses. Uh, so I going to go 90 degrees around the circle roughly and uh, make my notch over there. So I've completed it, got my notch in there. It's about one and three eighths inches down and I did it for the full width of the, the little bracket that's, that the handles are, are mounted on. Maybe I didn't have to do that full width but I figured it would hang up with how tight it was and I found if I just cock it a little as it goes in it clears that bottom piece and then sits in there nicely. Now we need to put vent holes and we want to put the same number of vent holes in the bottom as we have on the top. Uh, it's important that you get the airflow through it um, you can see how it discolors. Uh, I only have a couple burns on this. And they won't last forever. And if you want to have something that lasts a lot longer, you can make it out of titanium. And that'll handle the heat a lot better. But it's a lot more expensive. And I would suggest you th that you uh, practice with the aluminum flashing, which is pretty cheap. Um, so I do not have a... A nice industrial punch. You can just use a, a hole punch and go around, but what I have is I think it's called a unibit. And so I'll I'll mark where I'm going to put my vents. You want it down enough that 
you know you don't want it up so close to the top here where you're going to have not going to have good airflow you want it down enough that you know the air the rising air can get out easily and not constrict by the closeness of to the pot so hopefully you can kind of see you know how it's tapering away from the pot there so I'm probably going to put the holes right around where that notch is I'm going to guess I'm going to like continue around here um, and then the bottom you want the whole way around obviously and that can be fairly low I'll probably do a quarter inch up uh, for the edge of the hole and I'll take you over to the drill press and show you how I do those so here's my setup on a drill press uh, you could probably do this with a handheld drill but it's a lot easier with the drill press uh, as I said you could also do it with a punch but, uh, I had one of these drill bits I just go very slow at the beginning until it punches through because you don't want to bend the, the aluminum once it goes through you can enlarge the hole and I just kind of eyeball it get them roughly the same size now don't try this with a standard uh, twist drill bread because it'll uh, tear up the, the aluminum and you'll end up with a mess. I tried it at one point. But go around and make all your holes. And there you have it. And nice thing about these, uh, I believe they're called a unibit. Um, now step, step drill bit. That's what I, I got these from uh, Harbor Freight Tools, I think. Either that or, or it was an Amazon. I think it was an Amazon purchase, actually. But it makes nice, smooth cuts. You really don't need to sand them on, on either side. Uh, I'll probably go out a file with my corners here, so just make them nice and smooth. But other than that, I'm done. I'll go outside and do a demo. Actually, I have one more thing that I need to do. I need to cut a notch in the bottom. I'm going to do it near my joint. I'm going to cut a notch for a remote fuel hose so that I can put this over a, I have a hockey puck stove that I plan on using with this it has a remote feed so I need to get the hose out from under the caldera cone alright well it's raining so I'm sitting up here under the umbrella here this is my current cook kit that I made up with the caldera cone um, not sure if I'm going to keep everything here or threw this quickly together. And the stuff sack was just one I had laying around. So I like having my cozy and rehydration uh, bowl. So I threw that in there and it, it worked actually pretty well to hold the Calera cone. Uh, for packing. And so this is my, I have that set up like that inside the, the pot. I got my handles which I slip on. I have a mini bic lighter, I 
have my hockey puck stove and a little baggie to prevent the, any alcohol contamination. I uh, have my, my baking cup. Uh, I'm not sure whether I haven't used it with this, but it just barely fits inside. I don't know whether I'll bake in this pot or not, but I had room for it, so I threw it in there. A little uh, pot holder. Uh, actually, I forgot my little scrubby and a little cup. So, let's do a test of uh, this to assemble the caldera cone. Uh, you easiest to kind of bend it so that it's off center, you know, so that one end goes into the other and then slide them together. And the more you do it, the easier it gets. And it just slid out on me. the stove is being made anymore. Uh, it's known as a hockey puck stove. And the reason I liked it, it came with a, a simmer ring. And I manufactured a, another one that is and this is the original simmer ring and then I made one that was just tone it down a little bit because for the caldera cone so I used the use the base here or the cover all right I have 20 milliliters of alcohol and I ready to go in the stove and I have two cups of cold water in my pot. And I will do this shot. Twenty milliliters is uh, about 0.65 ounces. At least that's what my little conversion app said. And for this amount, I don't really need the remote feed because it took all the all the fuel in there. Just coming up on nine minutes now. It's been going with that uh, 0.67 ounces of water and or of alcohol, and it's still burning strong. Uh, I believe we're at a rolling boil. Sure looks like it from here. Yep, that's uh, rolling. So. About nine minutes, probably I was a little little behind on that uh, starting the timer. It's probably 15 seconds, so about 9:15 or so when it first was hitting a boil. Uh, I can hear 
the uh, stove starting to sputter. I can't really get under there very easily. Actually, what I found I could do is I can put my camera under there and see if it's see what the flame is like. The flame is definitely smaller than it was, but I can still see a flame. And we are ten and a half minutes now. Especially if you add the fifteen seconds to that time that's on there. Uh, all right. um, so it said I would that clock is about 15 seconds or so behind so it's uh, certainly that was plenty it looks like it's it's definitely slowing now just about out handle is still cool should be able to lift the whole thing see there you see the amount of flame I have left is not much just its last gasps and the wind is definitely affecting it. So I'd say full flame out, I would say 11 and a half. I mean, it's still struggling, but 11 and a half minutes. So I'm pleased with that. Uh, and it, uh, I think my Simmer ring there worked really well because I don't see any discoloration on my Caldera cone. In my previous uh, tests with my other pot and different stoves, uh, including this one without a simmer ring, it really uh, blew a lot of heat up the sides. Uh, so I'm very pleased with that. There it's out officially now at 12 minutes. So. Certainly there, if I had a more powerful stove, I could boil faster, but uh, I'm just interested in something that'll go nice and slow. And uh, with the other simmer ring, uh, I might be able to do some baking or, uh, I'm not sure the caldera cone may just concentrate the heat too much for baking, but uh, I'll probably play with it. Get out there and have fun get it down close. Once you get it down close enough, you're going to snuff. 